Finally, we come to what is an archaeological film? This question was asked by researchers who first tried to compile a list of all archaeological film. This was actually possible at one point in the early 80s, but now is extremely difficult to determine. This list also included films where archaeologists were merely consulted rather than the primary authors of this film. So one of the main problems they encountered in compiling the entries for this guide was determining what constitutes an archaeological film. Does it have to show excavation? Should it deal with prehistoric times? So in my article that I assigned for the reading this week, I kept it pretty simple. I define an archaeological film as a film made by an archaeologist in order to communicate some aspect of archaeological research. Yet this definition is surprisingly difficult to stick to. Does the archaeologist have to hold the camera, be involved in the editing, script all the sequences? So, obviously, there may be a, a lot of overlap between archaeological films and the broader genre of documentary filmmaking. Still, I think it is a very important distinction to make as archaeologists are interested in communicating different things than many documentary filmmakers. We also possess trained professional vision that may focus a lens on aspects of artifacts or landscapes that would evade filmmakers without archaeological training. I identified several genres within archaeologists made films. I'll run through these quickly now, then show you examples of each in a moment. The first is expository, so didactic, voice of God narration, talking head interviews. These are probably the most ubiquitous within archaeological films. You generally get a man telling you about how important the archaeological remains are, with women and people of color in the background digging. For a while, I was reviewing archaeological documentaries, and I started a beard count. Spoilers, it was high. Still, this is a really useful genre, and arguably, you should walk before you run regarding filmmaking. And, arguably, most of your archaeology lecturers have now made expository films by re pre-recording your lectures. I'm still excited to see if this will result in more archaeologists making movies, but we'll see. We go on to direct testimonial, so archaeologists directly telling the story of archaeology in video diaries or phase videos. These are generally archaeologists standing in the trench describing the archaeological remains they are working on. These are a difficult genre as the precise terminology can make them inaccessible or inappropriate for general audiences. But with some skillful filmmaking you can illustrate the terms by focusing in on the points of discussion in the narration. It's impressionistic, so art slash archaeology without authoritative voiceovers, it can be fragmentary. These are seen as more experimental and perhaps less accessible to public audiences who may not pick up on the nuance that the archaeologist is trying to convey. Phenomenological, which records the sensory components of fieldwork, this is an exciting genre that attempts to provide the direct experience of being an archaeologist. The archaeologist filmmaker just tries to show you our perspective through the lens. This is a bit easier these days with the growing popularity of GoPros and the like. And 360 Film. This is a very new tool within archaeological filmmaking, and I'll be going over it more in week 9, but with 360 Film you may view in each direction, but you do not have control over which way the audience is looking at any one time. It's an exciting development for archaeological filmmaking, and I've made some pretty terrible 360 films, but there is a lot of potential there. I'll run through examples of each, except the 360 of these now, but watch how there is some crossover between them. First off, again, expository. I created this film as a postdoc for the Eurotask project, which was an interdisciplinary research project exploring the history and contemporary legacies of the transatlantic slave trade. This video introduce, introduces the work of Winston Fulgence. My name is Winston Fulgence. I come from the Caribbean island of St. Lucia. And uh, my background is in history. My first degree is in history. I've been a history teacher for almost 20 years. Uh, my second degree, my master's degree, is in anthropology. And right now I'm at the University of York doing a PhD in archaeology. Um, specifically, my research will focus on the memorialization process. So I'll be looking at the process of memorialization, memorialization of the slave trade in Africa, West Africa, the Caribbean, Europe, and the USA, looking specifically at how people go about memorializing
legalizing the slave trade and the process of getting to presenting the memorials to the people who are going to visit the sites um, on plantations, in museums, and so on. Second, direct testimonial. This is a film I created Daniel Edisford working for the Origins of Doha and Qatar project, and he describes archaeological remains that are somewhat difficult to see, as you may remember from the illustration lectures. Note how I show what he's talking about through the use of B-roll or close-in shots of features. I am Daniel Edisford, the field director for the Origins of Doha project. And we are in Fawayrat, located in the north of Qatar, where we've just started excavation on a pearling village. I'm stood in Trench 1, and in this corner of the trench, you can see the latest phase of architecture, which is the corner of a compound extending beyond the trench this way. You see the bottom of the wall, and below it, there are earlier surfaces associated with another building, which is represented by these shallow trenches that I'm stood in and the stone from these buildings have been removed and used presumably to build this later building. In the corner of this room there's a small half set into these shell surfaces that represent internal surfaces within the earlier phase of building. And then we come on to Impressionistic this video is called In Transit. This was a 2006 collaboration between Greg Bailey, Cassie Newland, Anna McWilliams, and John Schofield, wherein the researchers excavated a 1991 Ford Transit van used by archaeologists and maintenance teams at Ironbridge Museum. As you watch this clip, think about the audience. What does it convey? Is it an archaeological film, even though it was made by archaeologists? I'm not going to show you the whole film now, but I will link to the entire thing in the VLE. Because okay. archaeology, I suppose, does try to recover the, the transit of things through times. Transit! That's a certain amount of affection for it, yes. I don't believe there's any room for sentiment. It, um, it for me, that was a really sort of nice memory of the van. Sort of a shelter. Uh, the van? A little house. It's great. I don't know, really, it doesn't really have any special meaning to me. A man of six or seven years old in the, in the commercial industry um, was very low mileage. So it rattled and it clanked, and it was, it, was, it was a bit of a rattle trap, but it didn't have any breakdowns, it didn't have really any flat tires, no bits yes. fell off. Yes, it was a, a nice to say the least. A joy to drive. That's my memory of the, of the van. I mean, people do this kind of thing all the time. I've always regarded this as a... A normal archaeological project. I've never, never seen it as, as being particularly different. To Contemporary archaeology, done. again, it, it is something which uh, tries to engage with no, well, uh, the archaeologist as the, the, the author event. of the report, a creative producer. You, you can't take words straight out of I'm very um, excited about it. I have to say, when I first turned up, I had no idea really what to expect. Vehicle. From Ironbridge, we got um, the registration documents. The disc. There's a whole the series thing. of MOT certificates, but not the most recent. And the gas emission test form. And um, then there's an accident report form. He'd crashed it on the way on, on the way up through Colbertdale. No. The corporate no, colour was a red colour. So I basically bought a red one. It, one it did end up in, in, in a fence.